Hey, what's up, guys? Today I'll show you a religious action horror film named Codrat. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The first scene shows a man performing a ritual on a possessed child. He's having difficulties in doing so and gets thrown across the room by a demon. The child floats in the air and threatens the man. After this, the child's consciousness returns for a moment before his life gets taken in front of the man by getting his neck broken. The man, whose name is Kodrat, mourns for the child. Because of this unfortunate event, Kodrat is sent to prison for the death of the boy. A fellow inmate recalls the time Kodrat received his gift of being a cleric from Allah, their god. Apparently, it's been three years since this miracle happened to him. However, Kodrat is apathetic to the inmate's words. It's then discovered that the child he failed to protect from the beginning was his own son. The cell door is opened by an officer, who suddenly puts chains around Kodrat's neck and begins to pull him out. Kodrat forcibly slides onto the floor and is taken to another room where he gets hanged. The officer speaks and reveals he's now possessed by the demon from earlier that was inhabiting his son's body. The demon reminds Kodrat of his warnings that he'll suffer forever as he lives and the only way to stop everything is when he dies. The inmate shouts for help and backup arrives to restrain the possessed officer. The inmate tries to call for Kodrat as he's losing consciousness. Kodrat, with his last breath, praises Allah. The scene shifts. Kodrat takes a big inhale of air. He sees himself in a desert. He proceeds to stand up and wander around until he stops in front of a solid white ground. Kodrat kneels down and prays. Moments pass by and he's startled by the abrupt brightness of the sun. Kodrat promptly wakes up in the real world. He panics when he realizes he's been sent to the morgue, where he's surrounded by dead bodies. He backs up in a corner and hides himself. The next scene shows Kodrat on a bus, traveling back to his hometown. It seems he has started reading the Bible and constantly praying again. He gets off the bus and sees a dead woman beside a mother whose child is crying because of its presence. Kodrat resumes his travels by walking. As he approaches his village, he hears people chanting inside a house as a girl screams in anguish. Kodrat chooses to ignore this and walks in the opposite direction. A woman named Yasmin notices him as he walks past her. She then enters the praying house and talks to the mother of the screaming girl. Yasmin tries to get the mother to pay back a debt she owes as she needs it for her own children's tuition, but the plan to ask for the money is unsuccessful. The girl goes out of control again, shouting at everyone as she's calmed down by her mother. It works, but only for a short while as she exhibits unusual behavior by smiling creepily. The possessed girl pushes off her mother and bangs her head on the floor as blood gushes out from her forehead. She looks at everyone in the room before bashing her head one last time on the floor. Meanwhile, Kodret goes to a boarding school and reunites with his old cleric friend Jafar. Jafar wonders how Kodrat is out of prison so soon. Kodrat answers that he's in remission. He asks his friend what happened to the school and why it looks neglected. Jafar explains that it started when a teacher fell ill and went into a coma, due to him ignoring his own health in favor of praying for Kodrat's safety. It seems that three years have gone by since Kodrat's possessed son passed. Since then, the village has experienced abnormal occurrences of illnesses and poverty. Even evil disturbances arrived on their doorsteps. Jafar questions why Kodrat even failed to exercise someone, especially when it was his own son. Before Kodrat can answer, Jafar gets called out. He leaves a remorseful Kodrat alone. In Yasmin's house, she watches her son, Alif, eat his meal. She ushers him to go to bed after dinner. When he goes inside his room, Yasmin hears her son talking to someone, so she opens his door. Alif is seen talking to someone inside his wardrobe. He tells her that he's talking with his father. Yasmin is worried by his behavior and scolds him. At that time, Yasmin's elder daughter, Asha, comes home. She reminds Asha not to be late anymore as the village isn't safe. But Asha tells her that she's just being paranoid. Yasmin informs Asha about the passing of the girl earlier. Asha gets furious that her mother didn't listen to her when she said the girl was sick and needed a doctor. Asha doesn't believe that the prayers did anything for the girl, and Yasmin chastises her. Yasmin continues telling Asha about Alif's condition. As the two argue outside, Alif gets called by the being from inside the wardrobe and slowly goes towards it. The two hold off their fighting when they hear a crash in Alif's room. When they open the door, the wheelchair is thrown at them. They see a leaf on the floor, his body almost inside the wardrobe. They act quickly and take care of him. 
In the morning, Yasmin and Asha are still taking care of Alif, who has caught a fever. Yasmin instructs Asha to go to school, but not before making up with her. Alif sits up when Asha leaves and asks where his wardrobe has gone. Yasmin answers that she moved it into the storage. Alif only stares distantly where it was placed before and ignores his mother. Yasmin leaves him alone. That night, Kodrat prays in his teacher's room when ominous signs befall him. Back with Yasmin, she finds that her son is missing. She and Asha look for him. Yasmin goes to the storage room and finds her son playing with the wardrobe again. Alif, for the second time, says that he's speaking with his father, which Yasmin rebukes as the father is long dead. Because of this, Alif suddenly changes and shows the demon possessing him. He attacks Yasmin. She is taken aback by this and falls down. Alif grabs a lopper and points it toward her. She's able to redirect the position of the object. When she fails to make Alif snap out of it, she gets injured by the sharp lopper. She screams in pain, but manages to escape the storage and lock her son inside. She orders a confused Asha to guard the door and not to let Alif out, also calling for help. Later on, Yasmin heads to the boarding school and Kudrat opens the door for her. She looks for Jafar, but he isn't present. She asks for Kudrat instead to exercise her son, but he rejects the offer and tells her she should wait for Jafar. As he closes the door on her, Yasmin utters the name of her son. Kodrat stops as he's reminded of his dead son who shared the same exact name. Through the possessed Alif's manipulations, Asha breaks down. The possessed Alif implies that the accident that caused his paralyzed state and the death of their father is all because of Asha. Disobeying her mother, Asha destroys the lock. The possessed Alif convinces her to go inside so she can see that their father is actually still alive. Asha goes towards the wardrobe without knowing that Alif's holding a weapon. He grabs her by the head and pulls her inside the wardrobe. Moments after, Asha is confused as to why she appears to be back at their house. She walks to the dining table and is greeted by her mother, brother, and father. Her father tells her happy birthday. Asha cries and hugs her father dearly. She celebrates her birthday by blowing out her cake's candles. Her father tells her to cut the cake. However, as she starts to cut it, back in the real world, she is actually cutting her own wrist. Asha feels pain, but her family convinces her to try cutting it again. Little by little, her wrist is being cut. Just then, Yasmin and Kodrat arrive. Yasmin calls out to her daughter, and this prompts her to stop. They see an unconscious Asha in the wardrobe, along with the possessed Alif. Kodrat begins to pray out loud and tries to take Asha away. Alif doesn't allow him to, so Kodrat focuses on putting Alif to sleep. Once he is unconscious, Kodrat successfully removes Asha from the illusion and takes the weapon away. Yasmin takes Asha and hides. Kodrat starts to exercise Alif, who wakes up and crawls toward him. The demon calls him a hypocrite as he prays but questions Allah's power. Kodrat ignores the taunts and proceeds to evade Alif's continuous attacks. Kodrat manages to throw the weapon away and resumes the exorcism. Before the demon leaves, he warns Kodrat of a stronger evil that's coming, indicating that the demon he struggled with back then is returning soon. On the mountain going home, Kodrat is visited by a hellhound and his dead son, which makes him fall. On the other hand, Yasmin is haunted by blood in the bathroom. When she and Asha go to Alif's room, they find out that he is still possessed. He goes after them and they lock him up. Jafar visits them and takes Alif. Later on, Kodrat is able to reach Yasmin's house and plans to save Alif, who's in Jafar's truck, but he gets stopped. He reveals that the same demon that killed his son is now residing in Alif. Jafar tells him that it's his responsibility to exorcise the boy, not Kodrat's. He asks Kodrat if he is doing this out of faith or for revenge for his deceased son, which makes Kodrat sigh in defeat. The next morning, Asha heads to Kodrat, and the two have a discussion about their faith in Allah. He advises her to seek forgiveness from Allah. Just then, Kodrat gets attacked by the girl's dead father, shouting that Kodrat and the others are using religion as an excuse to have control over the village. He ends the beating when he hears Asha screams and finds his wife nowhere in sight as she's ending her own life from the loss of her own daughter. The scene shifts to the boarding school, where Kodrat watches as a healthy Alif reunites with his family. Jafar briefs him that Alif's exorcism went well, but Kodrat doesn't look pleased at all. He is angered by the revelation of Jafar selfishly taking pay of land, disguised as gifts from the villagers in return for exorcising them. Jafar reasons it's for the new boarding school, but Kodrat refutes that doing the greater good is more important and to not put the village in misery. 
Kodrat warns Jafar not to touch Yasmin's land and not to take any pay for exercising anymore. He also reminds him to respect the values which their teacher has taught them. Kodrat is speechless when Jafar instructs one of the men to escort him out of the boarding school, claiming that he is too holy to stay there. Kodrat could do nothing but accept this. Later on, as Yasmin makes her son drink holy water, the electricity in their house dies. She leaves a leaf with Asha to fix it. Yasmin hears creaking noises in the dark and checks it out. Her lantern dies out and she notices the wardrobe opening. She attempts to light it but gets attacked by a hellhound. The dog becomes smoke and goes inside her. Meanwhile, a leaf is worried about their mother. They hear a noise, so Asha checks it out. She finds the door open and calls out to their mother. She closes the door and hears sounds from the kitchen. She gets startled when her mom calls for her in the dark. She complies when her mother instructs her to call for Jafar. Kodrat is saying goodbyes to his teacher when he suddenly hears him calling for him in his unconscious state. Later on, Kodrat fights off the men in the boarding school to go look for Jafar. When he goes to Jafar's home, he hears his voice praying for a demon to give him the power to rule the world. Kodrat follows the sound and is taken to another room where Jafar is performing a ritual. The two begin to fight one another. Kodrat is enraged by Jafar's hypocritical ways and betrayal to Allah. He gets kicked in the face by Jafar and stumbles. Jafar attempts to recruit him, but he declines. Jafar threatens him to accept the offer, but Kodrat only stands to fight once more as he praises Allah. With a knife in Jafar's hand, the two begin to fight again. Only this time, Kodrat manages to steal the knife, injuring Jafar and making him unconscious. The scene shifts to Yasmin burning the storage. Inside, she starts to bury her son alive. When Kodrat arrives at their home, he immediately goes to Yasmin. Asha asks where Alif is. The demon in Yasmin's body talks about a prophecy about a person who will stand in its way to mislead human souls. That person is Kodrat. The demon is frustrated by its unsuccessful attempts to kill Kodrat, but not this time. It uses Yasmin's body to taunt Kodrat, but he's unaffected. She attacks him, but he defends well and performs the exorcism. Meanwhile, Asha attempts to dig up her brother. Like last time, Kodrat is having difficulties banishing the demon. It makes fun of him, but he tries again with the exorcism with a stronger resolve. They tackle and chase each other until Kodrat begins to lose energy. Asha tries to help but gets thrown away as she is unable to hit her own mother's body. In retaliation, Kodrat chants prayers to Allah and resumes exercising Yasmin despite her protests. They get lifted off the ground but he still doesn't stop until the demon is gone. They fall right after. Asha runs to her mom where Yasmin asks the whereabouts of her son. Asha only cries as they realize that he's still buried. Kodrat quickly starts digging as Yasmin cries. Kodrat is surprised when he finds his son buried instead. The boy wakes up and convinces Kodrat to come with him. He takes his son's hand and embraces him. Kodrat tells him that he loves him and will always miss him. Yasmin and Asha, knowing that it's only an illusion, start to recite prayers. Kodrat accepts his son's death. This further angers the demon as its plan is again unsuccessful. Kodrat performs one last exorcism to banish the demon in Aleph's body. He repeatedly gives praise to Allah as the demon is completely banished away. In the end, Yasmin's son is returned safe, so she and Asha hug him tightly. Six months later, Kodrat is ready to leave the village to find out the mystery behind his wife's death. It seems that everyone in the village is okay now and is living normally again. The boarding school is fixed. The teacher has woken up from his coma and is seeing Kodrat off. He reminds Kodrat that he can return whenever he wants to as the village is his home. He even gives his motorbike to Kodrat for the journey. Before Kodrat is able to leave fully, he is stopped by Yasmin and her children. A leaf shows him that he's able to stand from his wheelchair. The three smile happily as they watch Kodrat drive off on his motorcycle. The end gives off a hint that Kodrat will return someday, possibly for another exorcism. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.